In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the features of the Emerson Smart Wireless Gateway using uh, the Wireless Heart Radio Network for field instrumentation. Right there up on that column, that blue box, is our recently installed Smart Wireless Gateway. It's a 2.4 gigahertz radio transceiver unit that acts as a manager for the wireless mesh network of field instruments. Right now, outside of our lab building, we've got a couple of Rosemount uh, transmitters. One is a vibrating fork level sensor, and the other one is a Model 648 temperature transmitter measuring ambient air temperature. And they're communicating to this gateway device uh, wirelessly over radio. The gateway device you see here has a black cable running up to the ceiling, up through a, um, a whip antenna on the roof, and that's how it's talking to the devices that are sitting out on the campus lawn. Now, to configure and monitor and diagnose things with the uh, data points within the gateway network, they made it very easy and convenient. Uh, they equipped the Smart Wireless Gateway with a web browser. So that means any computer that's on the same Ethernet network as the Wireless Gateway is able to communicate to it using any uh, standard web browser like Internet Explorer. So all you have to do is go up to the uh, URL and type in the IP address of that particular gateway. I happen to know in this case the gateway is 169.254.5.12. When I do that, it brings up the Smart Wireless Gateway page. So we're looking at the web server within the Smart Wireless Gateway. So it looks like we're visiting a web page on the internet, but it's not. It's really on a private network in our lab. And then here you can see some of the features uh, that are available. Uh, for example, under Diagnostics, we can click on Network. It shows us some uh, overall diagnostic info about the network. Currently we have two devices that are live. And we can take a look at those devices here. We can see their heart tag names. Uh, what active neighbors they have. In this case, Wireless Heart is the name of the gateway itself. And these two devices, because they're positioned close to each other, are neighbors to each other. So Temperature Transmitter 101, that's a Model 648 transmitter, uh, has neighbors Wireless Heart, which is the gateway, and also the level switch sitting just a few feet away. The level switch has neighbors Wireless Heart gateway and the temp transmitter. So that's what we mean by a nesh, mesh network. They're actually uh, network to each other three ways, like a triangle in this case. Two field devices and one gateway. Now the reliability and the path stability figures are, are kind of poor right now. We just recently fired this up and through the configuration and the join process uh, you get some uh, intermittent communication. So this, uh, those numbers get better over time. It shows the join time over here. Um, the node state, green of course being good. And there's even some advanced uh, network stats here if you uh, care to look at that. Uh, transmit request, receive uh, burst messages, all kinds of stuff like that. And if you take a look at Explorer, Explorer allows you to uh, drill down into each one of these transmitters and explore more about the variables that it's reporting. So let's take a look here at TT101. You can see both the, the transmitters on our mesh network are displayed, TT101 being the temperature transmitter. Uh, they are currently set for a burst rate of updating every four seconds. They can actually go as fast as every second. With the latest version of this gateway and the latest transmitters, I can do one second update rates, which is pretty impressive for a battery-powered wireless device. So currently, the temp transmitter is reading about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it also gives me uh, secondary and tertiary variables here, uh, dealing with terminal temperature on the transmitter, and a quaternary variable. In this case, that is the battery voltage for the lithium battery that powers the device. Same thing with the level switch. Uh, the level switch uh, gives me some uh, variables. The primary variable for the level switch is simply a 1 or a 0. Do I have level there or not? It's a point contact level switch, so it's not a, an analog type sensor like the Model 648. Secondary variable on the level switch is the vibrational uh, frequency of the uh, tuning fork probe that it uses to detect the liquid or solid level. It also gives uh, internal temperature there, and as a quaternary value, it gives the battery voltage. So those are some basic um, things you can explore here. You can also drill down deeper into each transmitter. For example, TT101, I'll click on that, and it gives me uh, a little bit more information. The value, the units, the status, uh, the assignment, last update time, etc. And over here, there's some additional status variables you can look into. Heart status, various uh, self-diagnostics of the internal, internals of the transmitter, and then if I click on Publish Data, 
you get just reams and reams of data that's available from that transmitter uh, transmitted during the bursts. So here it shows the name of the variable, the value it has, the status, green being good of course, blast update time, and the uh, dig digital data type. So for example, if we scroll down here, and let's get down to, uh, for example, PV. PV is our primary variable, and that is temperature right here. You can see it's a 32-bit floating point uh, data type. And then PV class is an 8-bit unsigned integer. PV healthy, in this case, is true. It's a Boolean, so it's either true or false. So you get to see all kinds of rich data uh, coming from this device, uh, dealing with internal diagnostics, with the uh, sensed variables, all kinds of stuff here. Uh, quite impressive, the amount of data this thing transmits back <coughs> over that wireless heart mesh network. I can also drill down into some uh, menus here. For example, under Setup, this is where I would do the configuration and setup of the uh, gateway device and also of the network. So for example, I'm logged in as administrator. I can go over here and open up the Network tab and click on Settings here. So here's where I can establish my Join key and my Network ID. The Network ID, of course, distinguishes one gateway from another. The Join key is basically your security. This is how you're able to permit each field device to join the wireless network. And in the interest of security, you can have the Join key blanked out like it is right here. So I just see dots. If I click on Yes, you would actually see our Join key. You can have it generate random Join keys. You can even have it rotate the Join key on an interval that you get to specify uh, for additional security. And here's the Ethernet protocol tab. This is where I get to set my uh, Ethernet port parameters. This is where I set my 169.254.5.12 address for our network. I can go into security here and set user accounts, uh, access for protocols. And this is pretty cool here. To get data in and out of the wireless gateway unit, I have all these protocols I can use. Uh, Emerson AMS, uh, asset management system uh, with different TCP ports. DHCP, Ethernet IP, Heart over IP, secure and unsecure, uh, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, of course, Modbus TCP, which we happen to be using here to exchange data. And if you want to see more detail on the Modbus, you can scroll down over here. <coughs> and here we see Modbus. Here's Modbus Communication. So here I get to set up the global communication parameters for Modbus in the wireless gateway. Right now the gateway device has a Modbus address of 10. If I'm using Modbus TCP, that's over port 502, which is standard for Modbus TCP. If I'm using uh, Modbus Serial, I get to set my baud rate, my parity, stop bits, uh, all that stuff. And then I get to select uh, various ways of representing numbers, floating point, rounded to a whole number, or scaled. And I can swap uh, floating point format, uh, the byte order there, or the word order, I should say. And let's see, if I go into Modbus mapping, here's where it gets really interesting for the technician. Modbus, of course, uses a, kind of a arbitrary set of numerical addresses for registers. And we need to map the uh, wireless heart device parameters to those registers. So I've chosen a couple registers here, uh, 30,001, 30,011. I've mapped 30, register 30,001 to the primary variable of temp transmitter 101. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, 30,011, I've mapped that to the quaternary variable of temp transmitter 101. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the measured temperature here in degrees Fahrenheit and sticking it in that Modbus register. And then here I'm taking the battery voltage of that same wireless transmitter and sticking it in that register. And now, if I have any Modbus master device on the network, it can query or pull um, this gateway, which of course is Modbus address 10, and look at those registers, and it can pull those uh, floating point variables and display them or do control based on them or whatever we want to do. And that's exactly what we happen to be doing over here with our Automation Direct HMI, which happens to be talking Modbus TCP over Ethernet, and I've programmed this to go to the, mod, uh, to the wireless heart gateway, uh, Modbus address number 10, and to pull for those two Modbus addresses to bring that data in and to display them as floating point numbers. So here we see 64.5 degrees. That's a live temperature reading from that transmitter. And there's a live battery voltage right there. So Modbus, as archaic a standard as it may be, is uh, pretty much ubiquitous among uh, industrial control devices. So if you have inter uh, connectivity at all between devices, it's pretty uh, common they're going to talk Modbus. 
and that gives us a way to get data in and out of devices made by different manufacturers. So this whole setup you saw here just took a few hours to set up, including uh, the commissioning of the wireless heart devices, uh, the Ethernet network uh, configuration, the Modbus mapping, and I, I had to do some head scratching here. It would have gone faster uh, had I uh, been more familiar with the procedure for setting it up. I actually had to do some uh, a couple of resets in the gateway before it was able to accept my Modbus mapping. But anyway, it's all set up now and working. Uh, it's pretty smooth and just an illustration of what you can do with wireless heart. And like I said, I'm pretty impressed with this technology, especially with the new update rates of one second. You can actually get uh, pretty fast data rates through your field devices wirelessly. Cool stuff.